Hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check out Galactic Rebellion from Eagle Griffin Games. This is for two to five players, taking about 45 minutes per player, and it's for ages 14 plus. And Galactic Rebellion, if you could not guess, is an epic space game where you are going to be placing workers, but you're going to have special workers who will do special things you'll be able to earn, and you're going to be going on covert missions, and there's going to be galactic senates where you're going to be bidding on playing awesome cards, and there's trade goods, and there's tech, and there's awesome little miniatures that legitimately look like really cool toys. It is a huge box that tries to make an immediate epic experience, but does it succeed? Let's open it up and check it out. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Glenn Drover's Empire's Galactic Rebellion. So first and foremost, we get our handy dandy rule sheet. 19 pages, double sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples. And when you first read it, it's going to seem like it's a very well done rule booklet. However, once you start playing the game, the holes in the rule booklet will really start to become evident. You will have lots of questions about how various different phases of the game work, when you're going to take back your meeples, where they're going to go, whether they're going to your used pile or your unused pile, or they're dead, or what's happening, or if they're out of the game completely. Those questions are not answered in here. Also, there's tons of tech in this game, and a lot of this tech is very confusing. Like, it sounds at first like it's really simple, but... When you really start to analyze it, you're like, wait, so I'm not quite sure what that means. So you go back here to the appendix, and then the appendix pretty much says exactly what's on these as well. And it's just like, I'm not sure, do I get this only if I get another one? Because it says gain... Uh, there's just a lot of frustration. I'll talk more about that in the pros and cons. What you need to know is the rule booklet will get you up and running playing pretty smoothly, but you will have a lot of questions as you progress through the game. Also, I want to mention that I do not have the game board set up because there's tons and tons and tons of stuff to set up. I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of how everything works in the game because despite how epic this game looks and how giant the box is and how these are all the components that I'm not using right now. Like, these are really deep. Like, that's my hand going in there. Um, it's it, it feels like an epic... It looks like an epic game. It's not that... Epic, actually. It's actually quite simple. It is a simple worker placement game where you're going to have uh, different workers that will do different things and you can earn different stuff and that's all really cool but we'll talk more about that later so let's get to the board itself and the components so we'll start with the board so what this game is it is going to be a worker placement area control game you're going to be placing your workers on all these different spots over here which i'll talk a little bit about later with the goal of gaining tech with the goal of gaining new specialists with going on covert missions or using uh, going to the galactic senate and having the most power of the galactic senate which lets you take imperial actions which will do various different things and then of course area control getting your dudes onto various different planets so that you can have control of those get trade routes which will gain you more money and victory points at the end of the game or get you more valuable science cubes which will help develop your combat because the game does have a pretty interesting way of doing combat which we'll talk about a little bit later so that is the board in a nutshell we'll talk more about the specifics a little bit later next you're going to have credits they're in increments of one and five they're perfectly serviceable and they're pretty nice um, next each player is going to get a whole boatload of these pawns and i say a boatload i mean really a bunch of these like this looks more like a dudes on a map game than a worker placement game when you see how many guys you get and i can say uh, with a five player game Towards the end of the game, it will be absolutely preposterous how many people are on the board. It's just gaga, but we'll talk more about that later. So let's take a look at the various different characters, because these meeples are not just all the same. So yes, most of you are going to have rebels, or workers, or just, they call it a couple different things in the rule booklet, which is really frustrating, another one of those quirks with the rule booklet, but this is what it's going to look like. It's a pretty nice skull, they're, they're very well done, and it's just going to be a guy with a gun. This, most of the time, are going to be the people that you're going to be playing to do various different things. So each person is going to have one of these, but with different colors. However, what you're going to be able to do is go and upgrade your workers, and I'll talk about that spot later. So you could have the trooper 
who's going to be better at defending planets. Uh, you could have the hero who's going to be able to attack planets, and he's also good at defending planets. He's also good at taking out sentinels, which are these big bad guys who are uh, not actually controlled by anyone. They're just, you know, people that are on the different planets who will attack you at the end of the game unless you kill them first. You are going to have the, uh, well, what is she called? The, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank right here. The smuggler, that's it, I want to say scavenger for some reason, and she's going to be able to get you trade routes off of planets, which will, are like trade goods, and they're going to give you, they're like double trade goods, so they're going to get you more money and also some points at the end of the game, uh, so she's really good at doing that, and they all are listed in this handy dandy little pamphlet that you're going to get. This is actually uh, really nice wood, and this is, this is your player aid right here, so there's a lot in here. This is actually very useful, so I do like that quite a good deal. I just want to mention that very briefly. Uh, next, or you're going to have the scientist, and the scientist is going to make it so that you can grab science cubes off these planets. Because when you first start the game, there's going to be a gray cube on each of these planets. If you put a scientist on that planet, then you get to take that cube, and it becomes a cube of your color. These cubes are going to be used in the combat, which will happen... Um, Generally pretty frequently towards the middle of the game, and at the end of the game it happens a whole bunch. But scientists are really good for doing that. Also, they're going to allow you to get the, the tech, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Last but not least, we have these dudes who are very useful when you are either going to planets, because when you go to the planet they will give you an extra one of these little grunt guys, or when you put them down here in the Galactic Senate. I think they're senators, I think they're what they're called, and they're going to count for two people down here instead of just one people. So those are the five different special troops that you're going to have in the game that you'll be able to earn, in addition to, of course, your regular grunt worker guy. Now, let's get these out of the way. These guys are going to be spread around the boards, around the planets, randomly. And these guys are big baddies. They will affect covert missions. I'll talk more about that later. They're very difficult to kill because I talked about how you're going to have these cubes right here. They start off with, I think, five or six. And at the end of the game, they have eight, which means they're going to be mowing you down. But we'll talk about how the end of the game works a little bit later. Also, you get just an insane number of these. I am not quite sure why you get so many of these. And there's even more in the box as well. Like, uh, like there's tons and tons and tons of these for some reason. I guess if you make up your own scenarios or something like that, not quite sure. But there are a lot of these in the game. Now, there also are going to be these little black ships right here. These cool little black ships right here. If this is on a planet, that means that you cannot go to that planet unless a card specifically says that you can. So essentially, they are going to block a planet off from having more people enter it, which is good if you already have control of that planet. Because at the end of the game, and at the end of each epoch, and there's going to be two epochs where you will score throughout the game, epoch one and epoch two, and the game goes over eight rounds, you're going to gain points for the majority of people on a planet. So for instance, whoever's in first on whichever planet has this, and each planet will have one of these, is going to get six points. Whoever's in second will get two points. Let's get all that stuff off the board, and let's start talking about the different spaces on the board. So first, oh no, I knocked off the trade goods. First up top, it's a really big board if you couldn't tell, that's my whole one right there, is turn order, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is one of those games where you're not gonna go around the table. It will be, oh, you can't even see it. It's dictated by turn order, which is up there. Now, underneath that is initiative. Initiative is pretty interesting because you're going to gain coins at the end of each round depending on where you place your initiative. So if you place your initiative right here, you're going to get four coins and you will go fourth next turn. The catch is you have to start on the left and work your way all, to the, all the way to the right. I'm not sure why they did that, but hey, they did. You only get the coins if you put a worker there. Next, you have the planetary influence spot. And how you're going to do this is on your, on your turn, you're just going to plop, plop a guy right there. And then when you get to the planetary influence, you'll pick him up and you'll put him on one of the planets. If you put one of the special troops on a planet, they might gain you valuable cubes, or they might get you those double trade routes, which will be very useful. Or they might, uh, if you put one of the, um, the senators on there, they might give you an extra troop on a planet, which means you're going to be more likely to control it. Uh, heroes and troopers also can be put on planets, and they're good for defending planets, because normally when you get attacked on a planet, you lose two of your people. However, if you have a trooper or a hero, you only lose them, which is good. 
The next spot is going to be the trade goods. And I forgot to mention this about the smuggler, but the smuggler gets really good stuff right here. Uh, and it says smuggler times two. If you put a smuggler on here, they're going to get two of these trade goods, which means if someone's in the fourth spot, they get screwed over. But granted, if they go in the fourth spot when a smuggler's there, they're just not paying attention and it's their fault. But yeah, so there's going to be various different trade goods. How the trade goods work are once you get three of them that are different, you're going to start earning one credit at the beginning of every turn. If you have three of a kind, you will gain three credits every turn. And if you have four of a kind, you will gain six credits every turn. Also, at the end of the game, uh, you'll get that many points so for instance if you had four of a kind and nothing else you would also gain six victory points at the end of the game so it's going to keep you having money during the game and also it's going to give you victory points at the end of the game next spot right here is the covert mission spot and the covert mission spot is where you're going to be able to place your workers and they will stay there until you are able to go on a covert mission so each round, one person is going to have, be able to go on a covert mission, and they will do various different things. You will go to various different planets and perform de various different tasks. They will earn you victory points, and also they'll let you do an action, which are pretty cool. You cannot do one of these actions unless you have more people in this area than there are sentinels on the board. So that is something to note when you're doing that. Uh, next, you have research technology, and you're going to have three kinds of technology, Epoch 1 technology, Epoch 2 technology, and Epoch 3 technology. Epoch 3 technology, we don't have to talk much about. It's mostly just going to give you victory points for various different things, gain four victory points per scientist on planets, gain three victory points per smuggler on planets, various different things like that. However, the ones in Epoch 1 and Epoch 2 are definitely more interesting. They will allow you to break some rules of the game, they'll give you credits, they'll give you extra workers to play with, uh, some will give you additional heroes each turn. Like this is this is one of those things that just oh, it's in the rule booklet and it confuses us and it's really not well worded. Gain one additional hero each turn. Uh, so it seems pretty straightforward, like you gain a hero, but is it going to your pile? Do you have to get a hero to gain this hero? Because it says additional hero. Is this the kind of thing where if you get a hero, you get an extra one? We weren't quite sure. Uh, there's also a misprint on here, I think it was, or in the rule booklet, where something on Epoch 2 is supposed to be on Epoch 1, or Epoch 1 is supposed to be on Epoch 2. I don't really remember. Uh, we noticed it, though. Uh, next, you have the Warfare Spot, which is where you're going to be able to place either heroes and troopers so they can go attack the different planets, potentially, which will definitely impact the majority. But oddly enough, they don't stay on the planet, so if you put a hero and he kills some people on Volok, he he comes back to you he doesn't stay on the planet not quite sure why but yeah also you can attack the sentinels uh next you have the specialist spot you go there and you will train one of your regular workers to become a specialist for free or you can go right there and pay five bucks to train a specialist last but not least you have the galactic senate this is this big spot down here and this will be filled with tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of people at the end of the game there will also be three cards down here and you're going to bid to do one of these cards at the end of each turn and it'll do various different things add three new sentinels to any planet so that can really mess somebody up a civil war erupts select one planet and randomly move half of all units on that planet so very interesting cards that can and will shake up the game progressively so down here we have the turn order track you're going to score at the end of each epoch like i mentioned so you'll score the victory points uh, based on how people are on here. Whoever has control of the Galactic Senate at the time will get, I believe, at seven points. Uh, so you're going to be scoring throughout the game. Now, I talked about the warfare, so let's talk about the warfare a little bit. So how the warfare works is when you first start the game, you are going to have, I believe, three cubes. So you're going to start off with three cubes, and I can only get blue cubes for some reason. But each person is going to have three cubes. Now, hopefully, throughout the game, you, you are going to get more cubes. But how warfare works is, let's just pretend I am attacking black. So we're going to take all of my all my warfare cubes, all their warfare cubes, and then we're going to draw it up, and then we're going to randomly go until two of the same color come out, at which point that person will win the warfare. So as you take your scientists to different planets and acquire more of these cubes, you are going to get better at warfare because you will have more cubes. You can never lose cubes, at least as far as I know. I don't think there's any cards that do anything like that. There's some epochs, which will give you more cubes. There's some uh, special abilities, which will ha let you have temporarily more cubes. Various different stuff like that. So that is how the warfare will be going throughout the game. Now, the big twist of this game, it's not like your typical worker placement game where you end the game, then you score up the point. 
points. No, at the end of this game, any of these big black guys, the uh, sentinels that are left on the planet, are going to start mowing down everyone on the planet. So let's just say this is what happens at the end of the game. So boop, 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 boop. We got two green guys there. We got one blue guy there. And we have a sentinel. So the sentinel is going on each planet is going to start attacking whoever is in power on that planet. So we would have a, a war between black and between green. So let's just say, you know, maybe green has five green cubes, uh, five green cubes. The black guy is always going to have eight at the end of the game. So he would have eight of these black cubes in his hand. So what's going to happen at the end of the game is you are going to get completely mowed down unless you have a lot of these cubes, unless you kill these guys during the game. And they will completely wipe out your force. So let's just pretend completely knock those guys out. And then they will completely knock out everyone else in the game one by one. So if there were four greens, three blues, and two reds, they would kill all the green. And then they would kill all the blue, and then they'd kill or try and kill all the red. So that can definitely impact who gets these victory points because you kind of never want to be in first when there's sentinels there because you know you're going to have to fight those sentinels and they are big, bad dudes. And sometimes you'll have two, three. Uh, we, we played, there was four sentinels on a planet and they completely wiped out everybody. Uh, so that is a drastic swing at the end of the game. Once you're done with that, you will tally up the points for the... Uh, who, who has control of the Senate, who has control of these. You'll get points for your trade goods, for your cards. Whoever has the most victory points will be the end of the uh, winner of the game. You write it down on this giant score sheet, and they will be the winner of Galactic Rebellion. Alrighty then, Galactic Rebellion from Eagle Griffin Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the pros side, this game, when you get it all set out, is going to look like an epic space game. Uh, Component-wise, very nice components. Um, I can't really have too many complaints about it. The, the miniatures are really well done. I like the sculpts. They look cool. They actually stand up. Little sentinels do it. It just looks really neat. All the little miniatures look great. And there's tons and tons and tons and tons of miniatures in this game. I like the box insert, the cubes, the credits. Uh, the things they use for epochs are pretty good. The cards are nice quality. The board layout is pretty well done. I like how the board layout works. It's, it feels clear and concise when you look at it. It's like, oh, planetary influence. We have trade goods. We have covert missions. Everything looks very well at first glance. I like a lot of the ideas in this game as well. I love the concept of being able to upgrade workers and have different workers who do different things. And, you know, this worker might be better at smuggling. This worker's better at warfare. This worker can attack. And, you know, I like all of that. The scientists and the researchers and technology and how the technology will slowly, progressively get better through stage one to stage two. I like all those ideas. I think there's a lot of fantastic ideas in this game. I really do. Like, I wanted to like this game a lot because I like a lot in this game. Now, one of the unpopular things that I think a lot of people are not going to like in this game is actually something that I really enjoy, which is at the end of the game, you have the galactic warfare where the Sentinels just start mowing down everybody. And I really enjoyed that when we played with five players. I thought it was really cool and really interesting how it just flipped the game on its head. And it was just like, oh my gosh, I just need to get that second cube. And it creates really tense moments where it's like, oh, this is my last guy on the planet. And there's only one more Sentinel and I just need one cube. And I like that. I like that tenseness and I like that excitement. And with five players, that excitement came through very well. If they could bottle up that galactic war and turn that into a 30 to 30 minute to one hour game, I would be all for that. Sign me up immediately. But, and there's all, this is a huge but, moving on to the cons, I can't recommend this game. I just can't at all. And there's a lot of reasons why. First and foremost, the rule booklet at first glance, and I do dry rule book runs, where I read the rule booklet and then... I just see if the game makes sense. It seems like it all makes sense, but then once you start playing the game, you have so many questions. What happens with workers when you pick them up? Some say they go to the used pile. Some say they go to the unused pile. Some don't actually tell you where they go. They just say, take them out of play. What does that mean? Where is this used pile? Where is this unused pile? 
all of your meeples, all your workers are used because you do it at the end of the... It's frustrating. And then the technology. The technology. Some of them are just insanely powerful. We think because we're not quite sure how they work because they're worded weirdly. And then you go to the back of the rule booklet where it has like two whole pages where it just talks about the technology and the cards and what they do. And it's just... This is, this is such a pet peeve. If you're going to have an appendix in the back which will tell you what the technology or a card does, don't just repeat the text that is on the card. Get a little bit more in depth. Tell us what the tech actually does because we would go to the back of this. And we would go to the back of this and we started off going to the back of this hoping there would be fair answers. And about after the third or fourth time, we went to the back joking about how it would probably confuse us even more and may have us arguing even more. I kid you not, we legitimately probably spent about 30 to 40 minutes of this game, the first game we played with five players, arguing about what different technology and cards meant and what how the rules were worded 30 to 40 minutes that is no exaggeration and it might actually be even more than that and if your rule booklet does that no naughty god and this is like this is a redoing of a game this is like a reprint redoing so the rules should be better they shouldn't be worse oh god Eco Griffin Games, you're a decent sized company. You make thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars on Kickstarter. Just God, God, rule booklets. More time on the rule booklets, less time on the miniatures. <laughs> Frustrating. But let's get back on track. So, what else do I not like about this game? Uh, this was a common complaint from a couple people. It has a lot of cool ideas. I talked about that in the pros, but they all just feel like they're just strung together. Like somebody had this idea for the game, and they're like, oh, we should do this too. Add that. Okay, they're like, oh, yeah, we'll put this spot down here for the bidding in the, the Galactic Senate. And this was like, oh, no, 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 put covert missions. That'd be super cool. So put, you put more guys for the covert missions. And then, oh, no, 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 but how about we have this? And, it, and then, we, oh, no, we can add this. And then we can do this thing, and then this thing. And they're just like, just throw all that stuff together. And then, yeah. That's kind of what it feels like. It feels very disjointed, which makes it not feel like an epic space game, which is what you're hoping for this. The box is humongous. The miniatures are fantastic. The board looks good. The pieces look fantastic. You want this epic, sprawling war game. You want, you know, a Twilight Imperium or for some people an Eclipse or something like that. And this does not provide that at all. It feels like a very straightforward worker placement game with some area control elements until you get to that Galactic Warfare, which at which point I I actually think it does kind of feel like an epic space game and that's another thing that i forgot to mention the galactic war i like it a lot at five players i thought that was really cool but a lot of people are really going to hate that because it completely swings the game drastically oh my gosh i feel like i'm probably going to be in the minority in liking this because it really like you could have eight people on a planet that could be your planet you could have it locked down but if there's even one or two sentinels there all your guys could get wiped out all that work you did completely wiped out and the person who has one scientist there might just get dumb luck they might get dumb luck and win that and then they get all the points and you're like Shh. And, and then there's other things too um the warfare spot the warfare spot it just doesn't feel that good you know, it, it's useful at certain points, and especially once you're getting close to epochs, but for the most part, the warfare spot just feels kind of weird. Uh, I feel like the technology can be too powerful, and that's another thing, the trade goods. I don't like how the trade goods work in the game, because the more trade goods you have, the more money you get, which means the more technology you can buy, which means the more power you have, but you don't trade in trade goods, you just keep them, which means you can acquire more trade goods, which means you can get more technology, which means you can get more powerful, which means you can get more money, which means you can get more trade goods, which means you can get more tech, and I think you see that. Now that wouldn't be such a big deal if these trade, or these tech, you know, helped you win the game, but they didn't give you victory points. These, at the end, do give you victory points, though. And you're going to have so much money that purchasing them will not be a problem. You can go, say, two, three spots there and just purchase all of them because you're going to have so much money because you have so many trade goods. It's just, it's a huge snowball with the trade good and the tech, especially if you get some of the good tech because there's some tech in here. Where we looked at that and we're like, oh my god, are you kidding me? 
You get five extra credits a turn? And it's like, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. And it's just, and then there's, there's the, oh man, there's just so much here. There's also the specialist. And I love the specialist. But here's the thing. Once you put a specialist on a planet, you get the special ability and then you can't take off the specialist. So you, if you use your specialist, most of the time you're going to lose your specialist unless you go to different spots. So like you can keep going to the technology with a scientist. But once you put that scientist on a planet, you can't use it anymore. So I don't know. I just didn't like how that when you put things on planets, you completely lose them. You can't pull them off. You can't say, hey, can you come back to me? And then, oh, that's that's the last thing I'm going to hit on. That's the last thing I'm going to hit on because I, I could continue to go on. Because there's just a lot of little things that add up into a giant mess with this game. Um, but the last thing that I want to mention is that towards the end of the game, there will be an absurd amount of... Of workers on the board just absolutely preposterous especially in the galactic senate i kid you not the galactic senate probably had 50 to 70 workers on it at the end of the game it was just oh i don't have anything else to do all these guys go to the galactic senate and it's just uh i wanted to like it I really did. I love epic games. I love space games. 45 minutes per player. That gets me going. That's going to turn off a lot of people. And I even mentioned that in the cons because there's so many other cons. Obviously, uh, yeah, 45 minutes per player. It's a very meaty, long game. But it's just... Uh, it's not a good game. I can't recommend it. I can't recommend it to anyone. Two players, five players, somewhere in the middle. Doesn't matter. I cannot recommend Galactic Rebellion. It's just... Ah, good ideas that did not come together very well at all so that is galactic rebellion from eagle griffin games one that i would steer clear from if you enjoyed this video please sure to click on that subscribe button down below or in the comments below let me know what do you think about the concept of the galactic warfare you've worked the entire game to get all your meeples all your well all your people in place on the board and then there's this really epic battle and it's thematic but it completely changes the game drastically do you think that's a cool idea or do you think that's a bad idea because i think i am in the minority but let me know what you think about it in the comments below and as always thanks for your time youtube